Good morning, everybody. It's Ashley from the Untrained Librarian, and it's a bit of a drab day in the Maritimes, but it's the perfect day to talk about something I'm very excited about, which is Springathon, which is coming up in the month of May. So I have a pile of books that I'm going to need your help with. Uh, we'll talk about them. I'll show you all of them, but maybe you can help me narrow down what I should read for the month. So let's just get into it. I thought I'd just insert that little clip of spring footage. I've been going on drives in the evening around dusk and that's sort of when the deer come out to feed and snack. Um, we have a lot in our backyard, but there is a certain route that has some protected fields. So you'll see easily 20 to 30 of them all together and they're gonna be having their babies soon, which is gonna be exciting, probably May, uh, beginning of June here. Um, but yeah, I am excited for this video. Let's get back on topic. I'm here today to talk about my spring TBR for the month of May. There is a fabulous readathon hosted by a great group of ladies called um, Springathon, and it is hosted by Natalie from A Curious Reader, Heidi from My Reading Life, and Doris from Alti Books, which are um, three of some of my most favorite channels. Their nonfiction really aligns with my taste, so if you like that, I'm sure you're already subscribed. Um, this readathon is going to be taking place in the first two weeks of May. You can carry it through the whole month. Uh, really, you only need to read a, a nature focused piece of writing that could still be fiction or poetry, whatever you like. And they have created four prompts. Those four prompts are caring, capture, color, and there's one more craft. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I have some books here that fit those prompts and others don't. Uh, we'll just read freely and see what happens, but I do need help narrowing the stack down because there's quite a few here that I'm excited about. So to begin, I'm going to talk about the books that I think I'm probably going to focus on reading on and then I'll show you more of just possibilities I may grab from. Um, so to start, I have two books that are actually focused on meadows and fields. And um, let's talk about Meadowland first, actually. This one I got from the Willoughby Book Club. They used to, they had a fantastic subscription where they actually would go through your Goodreads account and pick books that really targeted your tastes. And they don't ship to Canada anymore, so I'm so sad. Um, but this was one that I got, so I need to uh, get to it. It's called Meadowland, The Private Life of an English Field by John Lewis Stemple. And it won the Wainwright Prize in 2015. It's focused more on... Um, it looks like the flora and fauna of a specific ancient meadow that he lived on and farmed on in England. And I've heard just really good things about this one and the pros are apparently beautiful. Even that cover is gorgeous. And then I have one that is taking place more in the Scottish Highlands. This is deep in a glen and it's focusing on particularly birds, their movements and habits, uh, but there are various other animals in here and it's just a look at the natural world there. Uh, so both of these, seem like really good nature options. Um, I'd like to at least read one from this grouping because they've been on my shelf for a little bit. I also have a memoir. Uh, it's called Brood by Jackie Polzin. This is a memoir intertwined with nature writing as well. And it's looking at her life. So she is a mother. She also has gone through some periods of grief, but it's focused on one year as she's taking care of four chickens. So she has her own little brood and it discusses the challenges that she faces while she's doing that. So various weather challenges, hot summers, cold winters, predators, um, and even a tornado. So I've heard really good things about this one and it would fit the caring prompt because she is caring for these animals but also color if you think about their feathers and uh, the different species of chickens that she um, she owns so it's apparently very witty but also moving and I'm excited I really want to read this one um, I'm curious about having a chicken coop uh, there's one down the road for me I hear the rooster all the time but we just I'd really have to think of the enclosure before I tackle that because the fox are unreal around here and I see them now regularly with a chicken in their mouth. 
Then I have a little bit of reader's guilt for these two. I probably should have already read them, especially since I love nature writing so much, but I haven't gotten to them. So I'm thinking if I can get to one or the other um, this coming month. I have Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. This one, the Pulitzer, and it's taking place at Tinker Creek in Virginia, and I've heard the prose are just absolutely gorgeous, and I also have The Maine Woods by Henry David Thoreau. I know this one spans about three years, and, um, and you know, he took a lot of notes, and he had a very, very adventurous spirit, but uh, it feels more like a fall cover to me, so we'll see how, where the mood takes me and what one I decide to pick up, um, but I'm hoping to at least get to one of those. I also have two books on very specific animals, so it's very niche uh, nature nonfiction, if that's something that interests you. So the first book is actually all about bats. It's called The Secret Life of Bats. Sorry about the glare, it's a really shiny cover. Um, but it's the My Adventures with the World's Most Misunderstood Mammals by Merlin Tuttle. This one is just talking about the species of bats and how we really underestimate them. Um, they have quite a high intelligence. They're capable of memory. Um, so they're actually compared to, like their social structure is compared to that of higher primates. And they're also really important to our ecosystem, pest control, pollination, um, reseeding forests. So I'm really looking forward to that one. I was gonna read it in Halloween, but uh, it's one of those floppy, comfortable books to read. Like, oh, so I might do this one in May, we'll see. Um, but I also have a very spring appropriate book called The Mosquito. And this book is A Human History of Our Deadliest Predator by Timothy Weingard. And it's looking at it from, it's obviously discussing mosquitoes as a species, but also from a very human perspective. Um, so how they have affected the human population and the modern world, uh, whether that be through disease like uh, malaria, the Zika virus, yellow fever, but also our economy and war and even the gin and tonic. So I'm not sure, um, but it's quite a thick book on a little bug. Uh, so hopefully it's all encompassing, but I'm excited. I think Doris mentioned this one as well. So maybe we'll both be reading that in May. Then I have a really gorgeous book that I'm going to try to get to as well this month. It's called Waterfall of Stars. This is by Roseanne Alexander. And it's my 10 years on the island of Skomer. And I think Natalie from A Curious Reader also mentioned this. Maybe it was for the prompt of color, um, just based on the descriptions of this island and the gorgeous cover. There is our author there. Uh, so this book is uh, covering a couple, basically they graduated, got married, and got jobs as a warden on an uninhabited island of Skomer where they are caring for some of the natural populations that live there from shearwaters, puffins, kittiwakes, um, and all other forms of wildlife. So that could also fit the caring prompt as well. But I really like books where it's not just a year on an uninhabited island. This is 10 years, a full decade of experience and all the adversity that they probably um, faced during that time period. So it talks about isolation, dwindling food, um, no electricity and phone. Uh, so I'm really excited to get to this one. I think it's going to be a really interesting read to sink into. So I'm hoping to prioritize that this month as well. And now that we're gonna be getting lots of spring rainfalls, we're gonna get lots of little mushroomies popping up. So I had to include a mushroom book and this is one that I've just acquired. I showed it in a recent haul. The Mushroom at the End of the World on the Possibility of Life in Capitalist Ruins by Anna Launhop Singh. So this is focused on one mushroom and it is the Matsutake. I mentioned before that it's mainly coming at it from a human perspective and the impact that this mushroom has. So whether that be on Japanese cuisine, um, trade and commerce, also nature guides. Um, it's full of photographs in here uh, of different industries and everything surrounding the history of this one mushroom. So I thought that would be a perfect choice. It's one that I really wanna to get to and the cover, the feel of the soft touch cover. I just love those kinds of books. Um, and then the next two that I have, I think could fall under the category of craft, because if you think about gardening, you are creating something, you're creating a space and it is sometimes a bit of an art. Um, so I found two books that I want to read and get me inspired for my own yard. The first I'll mention here is A Garden Life, The Natural Approach to Designing, Planting and Maintaining a Northern Temperate Garden, which is my location. This is written by Diana Beresford Kroger. Uh, I just read for the book Naturalist C Club last month, I read a book by her and it really inspired me, her whole perspective and take on gardening. So I searched my library and I found this copy 
it's focused on native species and how to create almost like a mini ecosystem within your yard so that you have um, pollinating shrubs, feeding shrubs, the layout of the ideal layout to encourage as much of a habitat as you possibly can. So it seems really informative as well as um, just showcasing certain plants that you can find and scout out to include. Uh, so that's going to be on my list. And then a very different take uh, on a gardening book that sort of has an opposite perspective, but I thought maybe I could still gain some inspiration from, is the story of the English garden. And they have often more manicured and structured approaches to their gardening, um, but this is looking back from medieval times until present day. And I thought maybe I could get some neat ideas as well and different species that they included. There are definitely some wildflower gardens here, but oftentimes you see them very well trimmed and well pruned, which is very different uh, camps. Um, but anyhow, I thought those books would be great. There's also another video by Celeste. She is one of my friends here on BookTube as well. And she did an April... Um, like books to have on your April nightstand. And there were so many gardening books within that. Um, so if you're looking for gardening inspiration, check out that video. I'll link it down below as well. So those were the batch of books that I think I'm primarily going to focus on for Springathon. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't know how many I'll get to. But now I just want to rifle through the other books that I own. And then there's always the chance I might take out one from the library. We'll see what happens. Uh, I seem to have a lot of birding books. And I think that was trending, especially when H is for Hawk came out and we got all excited. And I seem to have ordered a ton of bird books. So it'd be nice if I could get to one of those this spring. I do have two birds that have come back and returned this year. And I'm positive it's them because they dance all around me. They try and get my attention when I'm outside they come right up to me and the one so it's a a male and female they have their babies in the apple trees I'm in my yard but he circles around the house and does his bird call every single morning when I'm having my coffee he goes post to post and he's also one of those birds that is very protective so any glass or mirrored surface he pecks at and all day there's tapping on various windows. So he exhausts his poor little self defending for no reason. And especially the mirrors on my car, he has pooped all over them and there are thousands of beak marks on these mirrors. And if you are even opening the car door to take your groceries out, they'll come inside and peck the rear view mirror and they've pooped, they've pooped on my seat I digress. Anyways, I feel like it's essential that I learn and be connected with these birds. I have four birdish related books that I could pick up. The first um, would actually work really well for the caring prompt. This is Mozart Starling by Lyanda Lynn Hopped. And Mozart basically had a bird that sang along with his compositions at his window and became more of a companion. Uh, and that's the story of that. So I thought that'd be really sweet. Um, I also have Life with a Life in Love with a Hard Luck J by Julie Zikafus. This is called Saving Jemima. And she rescues this bird and rehabilitates it, releases it. And I think the bird ends up getting sick again and coming back to her. And it's about that journey where she's trying to treat it, but also keep it wild. Um, so interested in that. And then I have one that's been on my shelf for so long. This is The Genius of Birds by Jennifer Ackerman. I heard it's great. This was a like a beat up copy that I got from Book Depository where you can get reduced, uh, even further reduced um, pricing. So yeah, I, I should get to this. I don't know why. I just got a little bit birded out for a bit. And then I also have um, something on birds' eggs. So this is very spring appropriate. It's the most perfect thing by Tim Burkhead. Inside and outside a bird's egg probably everything we need to know about how eggs are formed. And um, yeah, I see the words ovaries and ova. So <laughs> it's beginning to end the whole process. The next four, I'm just going to briefly flash up at you because they've been sitting um, on my shelf and I should have probably got to them, but I think there's one, they're ones that we've, we've seen around. So they're not um, anything new, but I have two Robert McFarlane books that I could pick up both Underland and Landmarks, gorgeous covers for these. And I also have 
two that are a little bit more on the adventurous intrigue side, I think. Um, so that would be A World Without Us by Alan Wiseman, which looks at what ha would happen if humans just did not exist anymore. Uh, following within the same day, what changes would occur up to a week, up to a millennium. And uh, so that really interests me from an environmental perspective. And then I also have The Lost City of Z, A Tale of Deadly Obsession in the Amazon by David Graham. And usually for Springathon, I pick more outdoorsy kind of natural landscapes. This one is taking place in the Amazon, so it's still nature writing. Um, it's looking at a British explorer who went there in 1925 and never returned. So David goes and does the same journey and uh, lives to tell the tale. So that should be interesting. And then I also have a couple of big books. I have Horizon uh, by Barry Lopez, which is a monumental work that spans decades from pole to pole. And it's all of his nature um, writing and experiences through various regions of the world. And so it sounds like an all encompassing scope. This one um, I ordered from Book Depository as well as this one, Book Depository Book Outlet. And I also have Becoming Wild by Carl Safina, and this is looking at how animal cultures raise family, create beauty, and achieve peace. So that's a beautiful color cover as well. This one um, I've heard such good praise on, and it just says it looks into three cultures of other than human beings in some of the Earth's remaining wild places. So if you're a sperm whale, a scarlet macaw, or a chimpanzee, you too experience life with the understanding that you are an individual in a particular community. Sounds like it could be quite touching. So the last and final book that I have to show you on this really long TBR is a new acquisition that I'm really excited about. I'll probably show it in a book haul in case you don't all watch this video, but it's called Endless Forms. The Secret World of Wasps by Syrian Summer. And beautiful, beautiful, look at the wings. Um, so we often villainize the wasp. It's more of a pest, it gets a bit of a bad rap and we focus all of our attention on the cute little fuzzy honeybee. Um, but this is looking at the importance of wasps and it's got a great quote on the back um, from David Golson who wrote Silent Earth. I really enjoyed that book all on insects. Um, but this has, I'll just read you a little bit from the blurb. And I'll forewarn you, the word wasps, like pluralized, is such a hard word to say on repeat that I'll probably mess this up. <laughs> but it says, inside are stories of wasps that spend their entire lives sealed inside of a fig. Wasps that turn cockroaches into living zombies, wasps that live inside other wasps. They've taught us to make paper. In fact, their sophisticated social networks are the best model we have on earth uh, for major evolutionary transitions. So I'm looking forward to this sort of understudied part of biology here. Um, yeah. So that is the end of all of them. I hope that some of these interest you. As you can see, I'm really excited for this readathon. Uh, Doris and Heidi have just been so supportive on BookTube. Uh, so I'm so thankful for them. And I've had some really neat conversations just on in the comments of some of Natalie's videos. She has such an interesting selection of books and her reading taste is just, it really aligns with mine as well. So if you ever need a little fourth member um, next year, I'm here. <laughs> and hopefully I can get through some of these because it'll just drive me to pick up some more nature books uh, for the following year. So let me know if you're participating or what your May TBRs look like. How has your April reading been as well? I'm just curious to hear about that. And we'll talk again soon. And I hope you guys are all well. Bye.